problem that you know the world has today is us you know we're we're having such a huge impact through most things that we do you know whether it's building roads or you know uh, co2 that we produce or uh, you know f uh, raping our oceans etc that the impact is just so big that you know the planet is having a hard time coping with it um, so I guess I would leave humans out and then the rest would be all right <laughs> Well, I'm a biologist and when I was um, studying biology in first in Oxford and then in Cambridge, I realized that there's lots of people you know, out there who want to do more than just roast on the beach and um, in their holiday time. And also I realized that, well, there's lots of scientists with interesting projects everywhere and the two things they usually lack is manpower and funding and that's exactly what Biosphere brings so it enables ordinary people to come in their holiday time, work with scientists around the world on their projects and through their expedition contribution it funds the project and um, you know they put in the labour and they help tracking cheetahs or you know capturing on camera traps snow leopards or uh, photographing whales, whatever we do with the scientists. Okay. Can you talk us through uh, one of your one of your expeditions? Well since we're in Australia let's do one that's closest to Australia. We are thinking about doing um, expeditions in Australia but that's maybe one or two years down the line. Uh, but Amman is an Arabian leopard expedition. So what we do there is we work with uh, Diwan which is the Royal Court. Uh, they have a department for nature conservation and we work with their people and we work with the Ministry of Environment and uh, Climate Affairs and we do a survey of leopards in an area where they still exist. Um, they've been pushed back along the Arabian Peninsula almost everywhere but there are some mountainous regions in Amman where they still persist but we don't really know how many there are there and that's kind of the baseline data that you need in order to be able to do plans on how to um, conserve them over time so we're in the early stages of that project and uh, we're doing a survey of how many there are and training locals and building capacity at the same time. You mentioned the locals there. What what elements, uh, what benefits do you think uh, biosphere expeditions bring to the local people? Well, it's central that that we do and that the locals see uh, an incentive for keeping these animals alive. You know, gone long gone are the days where we say, look, this is a national park, everyone out, we'll post guards around it, you know, and, and try and protect the wildlife inside. It just doesn't work. But, you know, if you can show the local guy that, you know, there is some money to be made, you know, and money rules the world, let's, uh, world, let's not be, you know, let's not mince our words here. If you can show them that, I'll give you an example from Africa, if you can show the guy, well, if you kill the elephant, you know you might make six hundred dollars by selling the ivory but if you keep it alive you can show it to tourists you know for the next 30 years and each year you'll make 150 and you know they can do the sums themselves so it's uh, it's creating incentives for people to keep these animals alive that we biologists say what pays stays um, so in Amman for example we're thinking of ways of doing um, creating incentives for people uh, setting up a program where they can show the animals to tourists that come along there's a research center that we're involved in setting up and a, and a visit, visitor center um, and we're also training them we're using them during our expedition times as cooks as guides as porters etc so it brings in money into the local community Fantastic. And, and what the people who go on the, the tours, it sounds like there's an, obviously a, quite a large adventure element to these tours. They're not just to just sit back, turn up in a bus and, and yeah. see an animal kind of tour. Can you talk us through some of the adventure angles that the, the tours in, yeah. in, involve? Well, in, we actually don't call them tours for that very reasons. We call them expeditions because, you know, our tagline is experience conservation in action. So it's not getting on the bus uh, and being spoon fed lions on the savannah with all the other tour buses. It's, it's about having a project there. Your primary reason of being there is helping the local scientists conduct this project. And the beautiful thing about biology is, is that a lot of it is stamp collecting. And by that I mean it's simple tasks that people need to do and that they can do without being biologists, but it's someone's got to do them. There is no satellite technology or whatever that can tell you look for uh, Arabian leopards in Oman, look for snow leopards in, uh, in Altai and tell me how, much the, uh, how many there are. The, 
that, that technology doesn't exist. It needs bodies on the ground, walking the trails, talking to the locals, looking for the scratch uh, marks, looking for the scat, looking for the tracks, looking for the animals themselves, putting up camera traps, photographing them. You know, it's extremely labor intensive, but it's easy to learn. It's easy to learn to recognize a track. And if you're not sure, you all have, when you're out in your small groups, um, digital cameras. The scientist won't be with you all the time because uh, he might be with another group. Um, so you just take a photo, bring it back to camp in the evening. The scientist looks at it and says, no, that's actually a wolf. You know, we're not interested in that. It says, oh, that's an Arabian leopard track. Let's go back there and you'll have a GPS um, and you will have logged the photo that you've taken so we can easily find it. So we explain to people how to record the data, how to fill in data sheets, how to work with a map and a compass and uh, how to recognize tracks. And then we, it's always the same whether you do what's called a transect underwater, you know, on a uh, reef check coral reef survey expedition, you swim along the transect or whether you do it uh, in Oman, you walk along a transect, which is a predefined route and you just record what you see. You know, how many tracks do you find? What other animals do you see? And there's not, in Oman, for example, there's not that many around. So if you see an ibex, you know you've seen an ibex. If you've seen a gazelle, you know you've seen a gazelle. And that's the kind of information that people can gather very, very easily with minimal, you know, a day, a day and a half training and then contribute value data. Fantastic. So there's a large element of, of, of trekking and, and four-wheel driving, I would imagine. How, how fit do people have to be to go on the, the expeditions? Well, we, we don't put any uh, prerequisites on other than you have to be able to speak English, which for the Aussies is obviously no problem. And for the diving expeditions, you have to have a diving qualification, but that's it. Um, there's no fitness qualifications. And by that, I mean that we have so many projects uh, that there's something for everyone. You know, we've had people in wheelchairs on our Azores expeditions, which is mainly boat based, where we work with whales and wolves, uh, sorry, whales and dolphins. Um, and we've had, uh, you know, people hard of hearing, you know, people from, you know, 18 or 16 to, I I think the oldest was 87 and within the expedition there's so much to do that there's something for everyone so let's go back to the snow leopard one you know if you are keen if you're a climber if you've got uh, experience you know you can look for the tracks up on the ridges up on the mountains you know go and do that track um, and see what data you come back with if you're tired you know or if if you're not that fit you know there's uh, stuff to be done in the valleys or there's stuff to be done near the camps you know we do bird surveys you know so there's something for everyone and the expeditions are so flexible that fitness isn't a, a huge issue and how do these expeditions actually um, present themselves or how do you go about selecting them they select themselves in the sense that scientists come to us and they say, look, I have this project and, you know, I need funding and I need manpower to be able to do it. And then we go through a very rigorous process uh, that's m many stages to make sure that, you know, what we're doing and the funding that we're putting in, you know, there's measurable outcomes. Uh, there's good outcomes for the local community as well as the wildlife. And it's a, it's a fairly involved process. And you know if we get 50 applications a year only one or two of them actually make the grade so it's basically self-selected hey, Now, 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 now